When we talk about materialists of ancient India, the most popular name that comes to our mind is that of the Charvakas. In layman terms, we can say that Charvakas were absolute rationalists who believed in only things which they can perceive through their senses. But when it comes to the nuances of this philosophy, we find little attention has been paid. So in this video, we will dive deep into this philosophy of ancient India. Before we talk about the Charvakas, it is important to remember that no credible text of this philosophy survive, which was authored by the follower of this philosophy. Whatever we know about this philosophy comes from the texts of their opponents like the Jain, Buddhist and the follower of the Vedic traditions. In all these texts, the Charvaka philosophy has been ridiculed and refuted. Thus, the main problem which we encounter when we try to study this philosophy is that most of our information comes from texts whose primary aim was to ridicule or refute the Charvaka philosophy. R.D. Ranade explains this conundrum beautifully when he writes, This philosophy had the misfortune of being known to us only through the writing of its opponents. It is also worth knowing that Charvaka was not the only name through which this philosophy was known in ancient times. Primarily, we find that three names have been used to refer to this philosophy. First is Lokayat. Second is Charvak and the third is Brahaspatya. Out of the three names, Lokayat has been used most often and the term has been understood in different ways by different scholars. E.B. Covell argues that this philosophy was called Lokayat because it was prevalent among the Lok or people. The great Vedantist seer Madhava Charya, in his 14th century work Sarva Darshan Sangraha, has also said that this philosophy belonged to common people who could not think beyond wealth and desire. That's why it was called Lokayat or philosophy of the common masses. Madhava Charya was not the only one to associate the Lokayat word with masses. His contemporary Jain philosopher Gunaratna and even Adi Shankaracharya referred to Lokayatas as crude mobs who behave without thinking. Although in historical sources, the most popular term that has been used to refer to this philosophy is Lokayat. But in modern times, Charvaka term has gained prominence. The meaning of this term is debatable. But some scholars argue that the Charvakas were one among the many materialist sects that opposed popular religious traditions, especially the Vedic tradition. And these scholars argue that we can think of the Charvaka school as a subset of a broader Lokayata school. But there are some scholars who think that Charvak was an eminent sage of the Lokayat philosophy who became so celebrated that people started identifying the Lokayat philosophy with his name. Surendra Das Gupta in his multi-volume history of Indian philosophy writes and I quote, It is very difficult to say whether Charvak was the name of a real person or a term applied to the followers of the Lokayat school. However, in many instances, the term Lokayat and Charvak has been simultaneously used to refer to this philosophy. Now coming to the third term, Brahaspatya. Here, interestingly, there is a consensus among scholars about the meaning of this term. It simply means philosophy of Brihaspati. Scholars believe that this Brihaspati was the founder of the Lokayat school of thought. There is a 3rd century Buddhist text, Shatashastra by Aryadev, in which we have an actual quotation of Brihaspati Sutra, which is believed to have been authored by this very Brihaspati. Although at present the text does not survive, but the fact that there is a quotation means that at some point this text may have existed. Now, if you are familiar with the Puranas, you will remember that in the Puranas there is also a Brihaspati who has been described as the Guru of the Devas. Now, we are not sure whether this Puranic Brihaspati is the same as the founder of the 
लोकायत स्कूल ऑफ थॉट ना कमिंग बैक टू द थ्री नेम्स ऑफ द स्कूल ऑफ थॉट जैन फिलोसफर गुणरत्न इन हिस्स कमेंट्री ऑन ए एट सेंचुरी टेक्स्ट शद दर्शन समुच्चय टेल्स अस द मीनिंग ऑफ ऑल द थ्री नेम्स ऑफ दिस फिलोसफी अकॉर्डिंग टू गुणरत्न दे आर कॉल्ड चारवकास बिकॉज दे च्यू इनडिस्क्रिमिनेटली एज ईटिंग एंड ड्रिंकिंग आर देयर ओनली गोल्स दे आर कॉल्ड लोकायतास बिकॉज दे बिहेव लाइक ऑर्डनरी पीपल एंड दे आर नोन एज बृहस्पत्य बिकॉज देयर फिलोसफी वॉज प्रोपाउंडेड बाय बृहस्पति नाउ वी हैव टॉक्ड ए लॉट अबाउट द डिफरेंट नेम्स ऑफ दिस फिलोसफी बट वॉट अबाउट इट्स ओरिजिन It certainly had a considerable presence in ancient India which is evident from the scathing attacks launched on them by all the major schools at that time but the question still remains how ancient the lokayatas were the earliest piece of evidence regarding the lokayatas comes from patanjali's mahabhashya while interpreting a grammatical formula from patanjali's mahabhashya Katyayan gives the example of Bhaguri commentary on the Lokayatas. This reference is quite significant for us because it points to a text that was associated with the Lokayat school. And if there is a commentary on the text then surely the original text must have also existed at some time. According to S N Das Gupta this Bhaguri commentary must have been composed between 300 BC to 150 BC as these are the probable dates of Katyayan as well Some scholars including Das Gupta believes that the Lokayat philosophy had come to India from ancient Sumeria maybe they considered Indians too spiritualistic to produce a materialistic ideology on their own land but many scholars reject this claim as per them the lokayatas are as intrinsic to the indian thought as other schools like jainism and buddhism are in early buddhist sources lokayatas are mentioned as a school of thought that associates body with the self in vinaypitak we find that some buddhist monks wanted to study the lokayat philosophy but they were forbid by the buddha himself in the famous sanskrit text divyavadan which is associated with the buddhist tradition the lokayatas are mentioned as a special branch of study now coming to the epics in the ayodhya kand section of the valmiki ramayana there is an episode in which a brahmin tries to preach some sort of a materialist philosophy to lord ram according to j muir this philosophy was nothing but the philosophy of the charvakas and this whole episode goes like this lord ram is in exile and his brother bharat had come to request him to return back to ayodhya and take the throne bharat was accompanied by a brahmin named jabali who was a counselor priest of dasharath in this episode jabali tries to persuade lord ram to not abstain from the luxury of his kingdom to keep his father's promise jabali argues to ram that your father dasharath is long dead so why are you wandering in this forest taking such hardships he advises ram not to behave like a common man because in this world no one is connected to each other because everyone takes birth and dies alone he adds o ram don't go on weeping because your father is dead like ordinary people wise men like you don't get attached to any person because they realize that in this mortal world no one is the real father and mother every person spends a determined time on this earth and after doing so they depart to their place in that case who can be the father and mother of someone even after saying these things jabali does not stop here he goes on to reject the futility of the shraddha ceremony he asks how can someone receive food when he is dead thus all this sacrifice for the dead is nothing more than a waste of food 
Jabali even denounces the Vedic sacrifices, donating alms and other austere practices and comments that all these things are written in scriptures by the learned men to induce others to give. Through these arguments, he tries to influence Lord Ram to return to Ayodhya and rule like a king. Ram, who was silent till now, replies in rage to Jabali, denouncing his ideas. Ram refutes his argument by saying that virtues are essential for a man's character. Ram says that among all the virtues, truthfulness is the highest on which the whole world is established. As a king, he is bound by the principle of truth and that is why he will keep the promise of his father. Although in this episode, the Lokayatas are nowhere mentioned, but the arguments presented by Jabali appears closer to the one propounded by the followers of the Lokayat school. The Lokayatas find mention in Mahabharata as well, where Draupadi tells Yudhishthir that when she was a child, her father had arranged a Brahmin to give her instruction in the Brahaspatya views. As we all know, Brahaspatya was one of the three names of the Lokayat school. All such reference of the Lokayatas prove the antiquity of this school. But precise dating remains a tenacious task for the scholar. According to Devi Prasad Chattopadhyay, who wrote the famous book, Lokayat, a study in ancient Indian materialism. In this book, Chattopadhyay argues that Lokayatas were certainly pre-Buddhist, if not pre-Upanishadic. Though we cannot accurately determine when these elements took the form of a well-established philosophy, but it could be argued that some elements of this philosophy are certainly pre-Buddhist. Now coming to the philosophy of the Charvakas, Texts that were written by their opponents remain our primary source to study this philosophy. Of all these texts, one of the most important is Sarva Darshan Sangraha, which was authored by the great Vedantist philosopher Madhvacharya. In this text, Madhvacharya argues that the Charvakas denied anything that cannot be perceived by the immediate senses. That is why they explicitly rejected the idea of any celestial bodies or gods, because we cannot see the gods via our naked eyes. By the same logic, they refused to acknowledge the afterlife and rebirth as they believed that the existence of the person ends with his death. They considered only four elements to be true, earth, water, wind and fire, because the fifth one, sky, could not be perceived by the senses. They did not differentiate between the body and the soul. They preached that, while life is yours, live joyously. None can escape death's searching eye. When once this frame of ours they burn, how shall it will return again? It is evident from these lines that the Charvakas did not believe in afterlife, rebirth and heavenly abodes. And as per these texts, the Charvakas advocated for sensual pleasures, which they believe to be the true goal of one's life. Just like the Charvakas, there was another ancient philosophy that does not survive today. I am here talking about the Ajivikas. You can watch this video to know about this forgotten philosophy. If you like this channel, do subscribe. Thank you for watching.